Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So for the next five days, I'll be posting a video every single day with the hope of raising money to help fight this pandemic. Now, if you've already seen this message, because I'm posting the same message every single day, just skip to this timestamp. So let's not use this space to debate about the pandemic. It's not the place for it. Now on my wife's side, somebody did pass away from it. So first-hand experience. Heck, everything on Thomas Stereo, first-hand experience, man. So the reason why I'm doing this is simply because I want to help. I want to do something for, to help with this disaster. And I believe a lot of people also want to do something. And one of the things that's stopping them can be the fear of not knowing for sure if the money they're giving out is going to the right place. Now, that's why I took some time to research on Doctors Without Borders to make sure that they're legit. I have spoken to them. My, my friend have met doctors from there. Someone I know has volunteered there. So I'm pretty sure they're legit. You know, this YouTube channel is one of the best thing I ever started in my life. Not only it gave me the chance to feel like a movie star when I go to a hi-fi trade show, it also allowed me the chance to try different gear as well as meeting people. Brought a whole community together and gave me the chance to interact with people. And uh, for that alone, it's totally worth all the energy and time I spend building this channel. Now, if I can use this channel to make the world a better place by bringing some positiveness to it, that would be so incredible. So that's part of the reason why I want to start this fundraiser. I also want to take this time to say thank you because I'm about to reach 30,000 subscribers. Can you imagine that 30,000 people click on the subscribe button? That alone is a miracle in itself. All right, so let's start today's video. Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So today I am going to talk about the Q Acoustic 3050i. Really excited about it because I've been waiting to get my hands on a pair of Q Acoustic for many years. Ever since I made the video on the Elad Debut 6.2, some of you have asked me to go check out the 3020i. But they never show on the used market, so I've been hunting for one for the longest time. So you can imagine how excited I was when Q Acoustic asked if I would review the 3020i. Now I told them I'd rather review the 3050i because I don't want to review stand mount speakers anymore. I, I personally prefer floor standing speakers. I know it's heavier, it's more trouble to bring it home, but it's definitely worth it. And I'm glad I got a chance to try these because a lot of people ask me to recommend them speakers and they give, they give me their criteria, what they want in a speaker. And I would say this will be perfect for many of the people who send me those emails. Now I'm going to get to that a bit later on, but uh, first let's take a look at the speaker. Now what you have here is two 6.5 inch woofers on top and on bottom. The big surprise here, these are paper, well, with rubber surround. So I was quite shocked when uh, I found out today that they were papers. Next you have a soft dome tweeter in the middle, it's like a, close to an inch. At the back, which is the coolest part, I think, is the binding post. I never see anything like this. I think it's really cute. Uh, next is about 40 inch tall, so not really big. And I, I like the, the, the curve on the cabinet. It gives it this modern look. So overall, I think it's a really cool looking speaker. One of the emails I get all the time is, Thomas, can you recommend me a speaker? I don't want to remortgage my house. Uh, I want to listen to music. I don't want to analyze music. So I don't want it to be bright. I don't want it to be analytical. Uh, I want it to be less than a thousand bucks. I don't want a subwoofer. So bass should be pretty decent on it. Good sound stage. What do you recommend? Ta-da! This one. This is what I recommend. Now in the past, I would recommend the Triangle Bro 3, the Puk LSIM 703, the Waftel D225, and the Elac UB5. Whenever people ask me to recommend them a speaker that's not too bright and you know you don't get that chance of listening fatigue. So this is another speaker I'll recommend. The way they voice it, the top end, it's different. Sometimes speakers, when they're smooth, it feels like they roll off the top end, like there's a veil in front of it. These do and don't at the same time. And that's what's interesting about it. You can tell it's soft, smooth, and yet it doesn't feel like I'm missing any information. It's like they, f they took an equalizer and they fine-tuned the treble part, rolled off some part, boost some part, and the end result is a very smooth sounding tweeter. So when I first got it, I decided to test it with the Moran's PM5003. I figured, okay, real world environment, 
speaker that costs 850 people will use it with uh, integrated amps between 500 to 1005 so I spend a lot of time with it so as I spend time listening to it what goes through my head is okay great this is good for that group of people smooth top end layback presentation full mid range no dip in the mid range warm sort of neutral bass is strong yes can be muddy sometimes but bass is strong don't have to worry about subwoofer and uh, overall I think it's a pleasant polite presentation now it's not a lively presentation there's times where I do hear a cabinet resonance but not a deal breaker highly recommend it and uh, yeah that's my review until this morning because usually when I uh, decide to to write notes for my video I would sit down and listen to the speaker while working on it okay the only difference today is that I decided to plug it into my own reference system number one and number two because today is a Sunday I say yeah you know what it's not late night because usually I listen late at night I can blast the volume so I turn the volume knob to 10 hit the play button and I'm like whoa what happened the, the, the thing just went on turbo it's like the volume knob is your turbo button and I'm like wow once you push the volume after a certain point the thing comes alive bit, like the scale is bigger it doesn't feel like small speakers um, it's more dynamic the bass punch whoa I, I feel the bass and also bass is well controlled now I think that has to do with my own power amp because my own reference gear is over ten thousand dollars and the power amp is able to grab onto these woofers and control it very well I message Sean I say what do you find when it comes to speed he say yeah it's okay I'm like it's more than okay I'm running these complex test track and for the price it's more than okay so I was blown away and I noticed because the top end is so smooth I can push the volume and I keep pushing it as I push it it's more dynamic and I feel more energy and that's where I go like oh my goodness I bet most people have only discovered 70% of its potential so from me being ah oh, it's okay I would recommend it great layback speaker to oh my gosh what is this thing so that got me curious I took out the Marantz again plug it in I'm like okay yeah that's exactly how I remember it we're good next I took out the Freya took out the crown and I plug it to the Eris 2 DAC actually I was been using the Eris 2 DAC the whole day because uh, as I said these are laid back speakers Eris 2 is tilted a bit on the top end so I figure yeah that's a good match now Eris 2 plus Freya plus Crown sounds great you're jumping levels already and uh, I notice okay everything's good the bass control is better than the Marantz I'm like but I wish there was a bit more emotions now the reason I say that is because these are soft sounding speakers for me it's good for emotions so that's where I took out my Creek Destiny Integrated Amp. Creek Audio or Creek Destiny? Creek, whatever. Now, once again, we're moving up in price now. This is about 2.3 grand, class AB. Plug that in, I'm like, yeah, now I can feel the emotions. I'm drawn into the music. And I'm like, I wish it's a bit smoother. Now I change to my musical paradise tube deck. That's where I go, okay, I don't feel the gap between this and my own reference gear is like a big gap I also changed the speaker cables to my own reference cables and that's where I realized wow these speakers can scale up pretty well and that's good because you don't want to buy a speaker that is your bottleneck let's say you have budget gear it's fine because if you buy it it's going to bring out the maximum potential of your budget gear if you have something a bit higher end this will keep up with whatever higher end you have all the way up to 10g it will keep up this speaker it's almost like it has two personality listen to it below a certain volume and you can enjoy the music with it you can get a glass of red wine out and just relax no need to analyze the music but just enjoy the music push it past a certain volume it comes alive there's energy not lively like klipsch not in your face kind of speaker 
And that's what a lot of people want. Not everyone wants a speaker that's in your face. Now, I do want to emphasize that this overall, the presentation is laid back. It's smooth. So if you want that monitor audio, calf, vocal kind of brightness, sharpness, detail, then these speakers are not for you. And if you want to read up more about it, goodness, there's tons of review on it. But I don't remember seeing anybody driving these speakers with some serious gear to see what's this maximum potential. About two point something grand, you're pretty much bringing out about 90 something percent of its potential. I'm not saying you need expensive gear to drive it, not at all. The Freya plus the Crown already can do quite amazing with these speakers. Now for those of you who follow me, yes, I do have other amps to try. It's just that, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll never get this review done if I keep trying. What happened with the XTZ? What happened with the Classic D200? And, and so forth, right? So as you can see, I'm pretty excited about it. Reminds me when I play with the Elac Debut 6.2, when I plug it to budget gear and then I plug it to higher end gear, that's where I see it scaling up. I'm like, whoa, that's so cool. All right, so that's my review of the 3050i. Now, for those of you who don't want to hear me talk about cables, you can leave at this point. So thank you very much, I'll see you. Now, when I got these speakers, QED also sent me a pair of silver cables, well, silver-coated cables. Uh, I told them I will not make a whole video on their cables because cables tend to start wars. So um, I'm like, okay, I can mention about it in the video. So what I did, once I got it, I even told my wife, hey, uh, you want to come listen to these cables with me, see if you can hear a difference between cables? Ah, she gave me the middle finger, man. Anyway, so... Uh, I got some Amazon cables uh, because I need a reference point and uh, Amazon cables are pretty good, man. So I end up testing mostly against the monster cable and I would say this, the cable, there is a difference, but it's subtle. There are cables that where I can just pick it up like this, but this one, I actually had to put effort into hearing the difference back and forth, back and forth. And then the, the conclusion I come down with is that this is a bit leaner sounding compared to, let's say, the monster cable. Because it's leaner sounding, I felt like there's more air, and also there's a bit more, I, it's not more detail, but a bit more refined, or a thinner on the top end. So it feels a bit more, yeah, I guess refined is the word. So there is a difference between this and other cables, but it's the kind of cable where you do have to really go A, B, A, B, A, B test. My own cables, the ones that I keep for myself, are the type that you can just listen like this and you'll pick up the difference right away. So is it for you? It depends on your system. For me, cable is always like the spice when you're cooking a dish. Like there's the right type of spice, but that spice does not work on all dishes. So would it work on your speaker? That really depends. I asked for it because I know the Q Acoustic is a bit laid back and I wanted something to tilt out the treble a little bit. It's silver coated, so it does tilt up a little bit, not like pure silver where it really tilts up the treble. The price, not too bad, right? Less than 100 bucks for five meter uh, US. So if you get three meter, maybe 70 bucks, I don't know. Uh, what I like about it is the connectors. At the end, they're, they're solid, man. When you push it into the binding post, it's gonna stay in there. Mm, for somebody who changes cable all the time, like speakers all the time, not too good. But if you're somebody who uh, plug it in and leave it in there, yeah, it is going to stay in there. Next, I like the fact that it's not too big, so it's easy to work with, it's easy to bend. And the fact that it's white color looks pretty cool. Okay, I'll see you next time.
like two fires moving so graceful while cat in the jungle with dangerous claws movement she anticipates a sight is set on her prey like stars in the darkest night crystallized